The grid is what lets electricity flow from Niagara Falls, the Hoover Dam, coal burning plants, and solar and wind farms to our plugged in lives. It keeps the lights on, our food warm, and us cool in the summertime. And most of all, it charges my phone. On September 4th, 1882, Thomas Edison flipped on the Pearl Street power plant and started up the nation's first electric utility. It burned coal to heat water to make steam. And that turned a turbine and made energy for about 80 local customers. In the end, though, Edison's so-called direct current, or DC system, was doomed. DC systems are strong near the source, but they weaken over long distances. They need high-voltage power lines. Alternating current, or AC, solved that problem. In an AC system, high-voltage transmission lines carry energy from large power plants. Transformers then decrease the voltage to safe and usable levels. Eventually, we ended up with three centralized hub-and-spoke systems in the country. One in the east, one in the west, and finally the Lone Star Grid of Texas. The only problem is, well, the U.S. has had more power failures per person than any other advanced economy. The main culprit? Nature. Ranging from big, unpredictable storms like Sandy to the inevitable fallen tree branch on a maxed out power line. Outages in an interconnected system, they can cascade to black out other areas. In 2003, much of the northeastern U.S. and part of Ontario all lost power, affecting some 50 million people. Centralized grid is also vulnerable to physical attack. On April 16, 2014, Snipers took out 17 high-voltage transformers at the Metcalf transmission station near Silicon Valley. The grid, vast, complex, and aging, and to most in need of rethinking to make it more reliable and more resilient.